All right, so this is my final stage of how to render a night scene in Blender. So we're going to be doing the post-processing today. If you haven't quite caught up yet, you can check out my first three videos on my channel. Come back here and finish off the series. Pretty much going to be taking this into Photoshop and I'm going to be doing some color grading and editing the values and all that good stuff. So I'm just going to jump straight into it. So this is the final render that I got out of Blender and you can see it's a little bit um, changed from the previous episode. I've just worked it up a little bit. I've added some wall sconces on the right hand side here and just some lights in the pool and um, you know just kind of casting some nice light along the lawn and just kind of brightening it up a little bit. Um, and I've also added a few trees at the back. So I've just spent a bit of time and just gotten that composition working. I've also just increased the intensity of these interior lights. So I've just kind of looked at the sky, I've looked at the outside lights, and I've just balanced that intensity out a little bit. So just before we get into Photoshop, I'm gonna show you something real quick. So if we go into Blender, um, if I go down here to the view layer, you want to make sure that you're including denoising data when you render and you don't want to be rendering with your denoiser. And this is just my personal um, process. I will create a denoise node in the compositing tab and you can just do that by enabling nodes up here. You can go shift A and then you can type in denoise and then that's a denoiser kind of node setup. And then you basically just plug your image into image, your denoising normal into normal, and then your denoising albedo into albedo. And I just find that's kind of a better process for getting a less noisy image and also retaining detail. It doesn't matter too much, but that's just how I do it. So let's just save this as a TIFF. So we're going to do a 16-bit TIFF, and I'm going to just save this urban cabin night let's save as image and by the way you can see that my full process for modeling this whole house and every, all the outside landscaping in my urban cabin course on youtube for free um, so let's jump into photoshop basically i'm just going to open up this image okay and i'm going to right click i'm going to go convert to smart object and let's just jump straight into Camera Raw Filter. And you can edit with whatever software you want. The, the um, principles will be the same. So if you go into Windows, you can type in Color Filter and enable the black and white one. And then you go Control Windows C and it turns everything to black and white. So we, I always start out in black and white and it just helps me see the values way better. And then we can tackle the colors later. So it just helps to simplify the process and edit colors and values a little bit cleaner. So immediately you can see like this brightest area is the focal point, which is perfect. That's what we want. And I'm just going to boost this up. You can see this kind of gray, dark gray is the darkest color tone that we have, uh, darkest value range that we have. And then you've got this here, which is quite bright compared to the rest of the vegetation. So that's not ideal. You kind of want all the vegetation to be similar, but it kind of is what it is. And the sky is nice and dark. And you can see just from a compositional point of view, we've got this nice sweeping motion with the trees. And then it leads your eye into the roof and then underneath. So I've just kind of purposefully directed the composition. We've got leading lines going right to the house, basically. All these nice leading lines. And then obviously the brightest area of the image is the inside of the house. So if we could go Control Windows C, we can go back and you can see that's like super colorful. I personally don't like a lot of colors, but what I'm gonna do initially is I'm gonna boost that vibrance up and I'm gonna reduce the saturation ever so slightly and that just helps to, um, yeah, it just has a nice effect. I don't really know how to explain it, but I, that's just what I do. Now, the first thing I notice with the colors is this blue is really blue. So into the color mixer, I'm going to just bring that right down to kind of a more of a gray blue. And then same with the green. I'm just going to bring that right down. And the orange, I think that's okay where it's at. Let's just bring it up a little bit. So I'm actually okay with most of that. If I go to the hue, I'm going to be moving the greens to more of a warmer tone. And then the yellows, let's just have a play around with that. I'm just kind of shifting these to a good 
area and making sure that we don't have too many colors going on in the scene. So the main colors here are the blue and the the blue and the orange, but we also have a little bit of green here, which is okay. Um, we can also play around with the um, luminosity. I, I don't like to mess around with it too much, but it's nice to do the oranges and the yellows for a night shot because it just helps things pop a little bit. And if we go back to saturation, I'm just going to bring that purple down a little bit and the magenta because we just don't like seeing those in our renders personally. In the blues, let's just quickly tweak the sky. I think it's pretty good. I'm just going to bring that sky saturation around. And it helps to zoom in and out as well. So that's looking pretty good. If we go up to detail, it's kind of the last thing we do. But let's just chuck that sharpening right up. It helps a lot. And I'm just going to play around with the texture now. These are just very subtle things. You don't want to go overboard with them. Uh, let's just play around with those black levels and the shadows. We're just kind of doing our last sweep through. I kind of prefer, yeah, that's kind of a nice area there. Yeah, that's pretty good there. So that's, um, you know, that's pretty, pretty straightforward, the process there. Um, I like to add a little bit of grain in the bottom, but it's a very subtle effect. I like to go on auto down here for geometry. And maybe a little bit of vignetting, just because it's a nice night scene. Let's just kind of bring that focus right into the focal point. Let's just dial that back a little bit. All these little effects, you don't want to go overboard, because that immediately makes your work look like a amateur's work. You want to really just put focus on having something that's nice and refined. I'm actually going to just bring that down a little bit, that luminosity for the greens, just to help it blend in. Um, and if I go across here to the adjustment brush, no, nope, that one, is that, is that it there? No, where is it? I think it's masking. So I'm just going to go brush and I'm a little bit bothered by how bright this stuff is versus the rest of the greenery. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to just make sure this red brush goes over all of this and let's just turn off the overlay. And let's just play around with the lightness of this. Let's bring that right down. Highlights down. Let's create a bit more shadow there. And let's just drop that exposure ever so slightly. Yeah, that's pretty good. If you have a look at the before and after, I think it's pretty good, but it might be a little bit overboard. Let's just lift those whites up a little bit and the highlights a little bit. And let's just go back and forth. I don't like going overboard, but you do have to be careful about things like that. So that's pretty good. If I go back to the adjustments, I just want to do one last play around with the saturation. I think that's pretty good. So if I go OK, you can see before and after. And if we zoom out a little bit, yeah, that's... That's a pretty massive change. So that's literally my process for editing a night shot in Blender. If you want to see more of my work, you can check out my Instagram at Oliver Higgins Architecture. And you can also have a look at my Discord. You can share your work with the community and get feedback. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.